peace and blessings. My heart is going 100 miles per hour because look who I have in the building. Brother Chase. Hey, man. Beard gang in the building. Beard gang. Big sexy is in the building. <laughs> How you been, brother? I've been blessed. That's a blessing. You have a lot going on. New album. Yeah. Would you first care to tell the people about your album and what are your plans for your album? Yeah. Um, so the album is called Still Standing. And, um, boy, man, so the first one that, that I did was actually last year on, on, in October. Um, I dropped it as a dedication to my grandmother, who had passed away in 2020. Wow. Yes, sir. And um, it was sort of like a self-produced thing. It was, it was like a passion project. It was something that I did to, you know, as a tribute to her, but it was also like a promise I made myself so that I would follow through with it and push right. to make sure that I didn't get distracted or, you know, that I, that I saw it through to fruition, right? Okay. And two weeks after I dropped that album, my mother passed away. Wow. Condolences. And, wow. Yeah. And um, so because I was already in this, the rhythm of making music for that last album, I just kept going because it became like a real cathartic process of just writing about my feelings. And rather than go to therapy, I just wrote about it. And wow. at that time, because of all that was happening, um, like the studio I had at my house, like we, we were in the process of moving and I broke the studio down to move. And so um, I ended up having to go to another studio to record this new, the new album right. and ended up going to Rucko Media. Man, come on. Ricky Ruckus. Right. <laughs> Man, that's an OG in the city. Yes, Big sir. shout out to him. We'll, we'll talk about him yeah. later, but yeah, 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 give that brother his flowers. Yes, yes sir. sir. All day. Um, and and it, so I went there. Um, with him and locked in with Rick, and it was kind of like something I'd always wanted to do, like almost like a bucket list project because right. of just what all he's done, you know what I mean? Right. And I'm still, even though I've been around a long time, like I'm really just getting rolling, getting you know your what feet I mean? Wet. Right, right, right. And um, so he, you know, I locked in with him, and on January 2nd of this year, I started recording it. I did the first song, Still Standing. That song goes hard, man. And like that was the, that was the, I think that was like the first song I wrote after my mom had died. Wow. Um, and yeah, man, we just, uh, I would just started going to him like every couple of weeks and we'd lock in and I would, I'd do some more writing. I'd go in with, you know, I found one. I thought, oh yeah, this one, I got to record this one. And I, I did that one and, and um, the, the album just started shaping itself. I didn't have like a certain number in mind of songs I wanted to put on it. I just started working and working and working. And right. finally, um, like Memorial Day was the last session I did and we finished it. But I didn't even know at that time what was crazy was because I didn't know at that time that um, that was going to be the last session because I still thought I maybe had a couple more songs to do. Right. But once I went home, and it was weird because that same day, Rick told me he was moving to L.A. Big shout out to Ricky and his big move in Los Angeles. Right, right. right. And um, and so it was like, if you're going to get something, if you, he was like, if, you, if you're going to get it done, you got to catch me next two weeks because I'm out of here. And I was like, He okay. don't play, does he? No, he does not. People, <laughs> people Rick, let's just, let me give Ricky his flowers yeah. real back. Ricky and I go way back. Him and Kenny G and Gluey, like they've been on the grind so long. Ricky, I see you, brother. I'm I'm proud of you, man. I know your your struggles. I know what your success is. Let me tell you why people think Ricky is arrogant or he's this because Ricky don't play. He's about his business. We recorded my daughter's song called Catalina with Bam. Get you, big shout out to Bam, and he got in there. And people know Ricky as an artist will slay anybody. Like Facts. lyrically, bars, he's Facts. been he's been doing that for years. Yes. But they don't understand his engineering intellectual no. gift. Right. We we hear about the greats like Choke, the Dave Rollins, you know, Chris yeah. Curry and all of them. But I think people need to focus on uh how great Ricky is. And I have a two part question. Still standing, what's that about? And how great was it working with Ricky, his engineering process? And first of all, I Rick's Rick's engineering skills is second Amazing. to none. Amazing. And his mix, second to none. I have yet to I've never sounded this good in life. Right. Like my my regular talking voice in, in the world doesn't sound as good as what Rick does with Man. Yeah. <laughs> It made me want to rap. Yeah, right, okay, man. okay. Hey, and and um still standing is about it's not just my mother. It's a tribute to my mother, but it's about my, my journey over the last six years and really a little bit before, but mainly in the last six years of my life where it was just like hurdle after hurdle thing. You know, I was living, I moved out of state for like a, a year to, to change careers and, and 
when I was there, like I felt like, man, because I'm, I'm, I'm in this position where I'm holding my whole family down. There was some, some stuff going on and it was like, I don't know if I'm going to ever be able to do music. Like, right, like right. I want it to, I mean, this might be it for me. And where I was at was not really wow. a, a place like how, at least where we're at here in North Carolina, like there is a scene, a, a music scene, right. a, a, an industry, you know, albeit maybe smaller than other places, but where I was, it was not that kind of environment. And I was just like, man, if I ever get back to North Carolina, I'm going to go super hard. And it was a, it was a, a journey. And in that journey, man, I, we, we lost a, a, a baby, uh, in 2018. You and your wife? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. I'm sorry. God. Yeah, and, and, and Losing the baby. I'm sorry about yeah, that. Yeah. In 2018, we, we lost a, a baby as early in the pregnancy, but it was a, it was a real traumatic event that happened. And, um, you know, there was that. And then my wife dealing with some, uh, you know, things, postpartum issues and things like that. And, you know, at that point, I was, it was very little outside contact from a lot of, you know, family and, and right. friends from the past. It was just us. And it was like, you know, it, it was just a rough, it was rough. But like, and in 2020, you know, we had the pandemic. Right. And then maybe two, three months after the pandemic started, my grandmother, who was like always my angel, she passed away. And I mean, she was, you know, 87, 88 years old. So right. it wasn't like a tragic thing. But to me, it was, it was just a blow. Right, right. Nine months later, her husband, my grandfather, died. Wow. And that was in 2021. Mm. And then in a year and a half later, in 2022, my mom. So it's like wow. hit after hit after hit after hit on top of just, you know, uh, what was going on in the world at the time. Right. And um, that's why I call it still standing, because it's like I keep getting taking hits and, you know, tell me why I'm taking hits while I'm still trying to get a grip. Like that's the right. You know, right. You know what I'm saying? Powerful song. Yeah, man. If you could look in that camera right there in front of in us. Front of us yeah, yeah. What would you say to your mother, your grandmother and your grandfather? If you could, if they can hear you right now, what would you say to them in that camera? I know that y'all have something to do with where my life is right now, from where you're at right now. Amen. I can see you Amen. and I love you. Amen. That's powerful. Yeah. Brother, sometimes when I um, get warmed up for the day or my wife and I, we have a business, a tree business, I listen to country music, right? Yeah. There's a song that made me think about you, what you just said. Uh, Randy Travis, mm -hmm. he walks on water, right, baby? That's, that's him giving a tribute to his great-grandfather or father. And we are mm -hmm. grandparents. Yeah. So we know the love. I love my children. We love our children, that's right, so wifey? But I think our grandbabies, it's, it's a unique kind of love. So I'm looking ahead in the future. The love you're talking about your grandfather, that's powerful. Yeah, man. I'm going to give you something crazy. Okay. This is how everything seems to be working right now. Don't add, it's, 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 there's, it's crazy how like you, the universe works. You just mentioned Randy Travis, right? Yeah, I love him. And I know you saw from like the, my mixtape, or not mixtape, my album, um, promo that I, that I dropped that you saw. Okay. And you saw my mother was a singer too. Man, I was about to I have a million questions about she, that. So her <laughs> and Randy know. Travis were managed by the same person. Man, they started out, out together in the 80s. Yeah. Get out of here. Yes. What? They were very, wow. when I say like close, like close collaborators, like I said, his, Randy Travis's wife managed him and my mother. Right. So they did all the same uh, circuit, I guess you would right. say, back in the right. days. So, let, me, yeah. let me give you yeah. credit. The look I like about you, brother, that you have the beard, you could be rapping, and right. the next time you could be on a country music right. video singing like Luke Combs or some of those, yeah. man. So, uh, well, it's so still standing to me is like almost an anthem that anybody through struggle couldn't appreciate. Um, so we appreciate you for putting that out. Yeah. My question is now, what do you want to do with your music? Does a million artists, is this something that you want to do as a career? Is this something you just want to do for entertainment, for yourself? What, do you, what, do you, what are your goals? I mean, but people ask me this a lot. Um, for me, like, it, as big or small as you want to call it, for me, the, the, the ability to be able to do something that I love and would do for free. Man, What? <laughs> <laughs> that something that I love and uh, would be able to do for free, but to get paid and make a living doing that. Man, what? That that's that's the dream. That's the, the American dream for me, man. Like, right. I would love to see it go as big as it could possibly go. Um, but the main thing is, I like to I want to touch people because right. I feel like you know by telling my story, there's people that you know 
and this isn't me saying this, my wife is the one that told me this, shout out my wife, um, that think we, no matter what our difference is, and we live in a time right now in the world where our differences are on spotlight right now. Not, preach, preach. And not our um, you know, similarities and things that, that do draw us together and, and make us uh, the same. We are more the same than, than we you know, care to believe, even though you know, the news would have you think different. But if I can share my raw emotions, my raw uncut emotions, feelings, experiences and things, it might show you that, you know, you may not be from my background. You may not be uh, maybe racially the same as me or, or demographically the same as me or whatever. It doesn't matter. Like if you got a heart and it hurts when, when, when it feels pain and mine does, too, we are the same. And if you hear my music and you hear that experience it might remind you of something you went through it might help you get through something that that you uh experienced that was hurting your heart too so right that that that's the main thing man it's all about helping people and and connecting with people we are we are connected more than we've ever been right now like because of technology but we are not connected as human beings as we used to be we're disconnected wow and music (laughs) has always been something that you know um brought people together music entertainment sports brought the masses together. We rally around wow. heroes. You know what I mean? Listen, he said the spotlight. I just want to give a shout out to today's sponsor, Jason. We are Winston. This is Winston Salem Apparel. Yeah. If I knew that, baby, if I knew what he had on, I would have worn a blue shirt, right? <laughs> Jason, go check him out at the flea market. He sponsored the show. The spotlight is real. Now, trying to give spotlight to one thing. I have a reaction channel. Yeah. Right? And so on Wednesdays, I do what's called White Wednesdays, where I celebrate white artists in a positive light, right? Yeah. And some people at first, what's funny, baby, we're laughing, my <laughs> wife's laughing. I have a, I think she's a black woman, beautiful black Cherokee woman, right? Shout out. Uh, so my pale, sexy self. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I have White Wednesdays, right? And we highlight white artists. And then on Thursdays, for the older black music, we have called what's Throw Black Thursdays. Mm. And then we have what's called Bring Black Thursdays back. And so the the, th- the channel's been catching so much traction with the little 6,000 viewers, right, yeah. from all over the world that people are like, hey, we need a Taiwanese Tuesdays. We need a Mongolian Mondays, yeah. right? They're messing with me. <laughs> but it's really getting a lot of love. At first, when I was on Facebook, people were like, Oh, White Wednesdays. It's almost like the climate now being a white male, you have people feel like you're censored or you automatically gotta defend yourself. Being a white artist in hip hop, have you ever had any experience of people giving you a hard time as or has it been all love? Honestly, the most pushback I ever had from my music was from my own mom. Okay. But other than that, most everybody either um, are willing to check it out or give it a chance. They may have preconceived notions. They don't generally tell me that. Right. But, you know, I, I haven't had a whole lot of pushback, really. Um, i probably gotten, I know, I know I have had a few experiences where people expected it not to be, and I'm not saying this. Expected like, you to be weak. Yeah, garbage. expected it to be weak going into it. Like, Play you know, above, below the rim. <laughs> right, right, right. And, uh, you know, I'm not, and, and I'm not trying to say this, like, to big my own self up. I'm just saying most every time they were always like, wow, really? Right, right. You know what I mean? Right. And I'm like. But you got soul, brother. And, you know, and, and soul is, my wife and I talk about this all the time, soul is felt. Yeah. It's not dealt. Meaning that, like, it, you can feel it, right? And so people, like, I can only imagine Ricky's thoughts about you when you got in the studio Casino dollars, man. Yeah, man. Casino dollars. How yeah. you, how how you and my brother know each other? Like it's a crazy he's story. He's an Aries. Big shout out to the Rams. Yeah, it's a crazy story, man. Um, so like I used to work with his cousin when I worked for the city of Winston Salem years ago, years and years ago. Okay. Um, and he um, he had told me about him, and he had actually sort of he he had sort of explained. He's like, you and him are very similar in the way that y'all are both like really driven artists, and but y'all are nothing alike personality wise. Y'all might would clash, right. and um, <laughs> that's what he said. He said y'all wow. are nothing alike. He said you're real, wow. you know, kind of. A, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what he meant, but he said sensitive. And he said, and he's like very, right. you know, kind of more of an aggressive person or whatever. Oh, he, and I, he's aggressive. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, aggressive. yeah. He'll knock your block off. <laughs> and I was known for that too, Bandit, but I'm very sensitive too. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, he, um, but I just one day, you know, after years and years of sort of paying attention from social media and stuff, you know, I always paid attention to like artists from my city, just, right. you know, 
Because they say that, you know, I had this line in another song that said, you know, they, they say my city's got too many haters. I say we got too many great ones. Wow. You know what I mean? And you from Trey Four originally? I'm from Winston, yeah. Trey Four or Winston? I'm Trey Four stand up, Winston Salem. I'm right. from, well, I'm, I grew up on right on the out, right on the, count, the, the, the county line of Davidson, Versailles. Okay, so right you, there. Yeah, so. But I've lived in the city longer than I've lived outside the city, if that makes sense. I just did a review about Kenny Cocaine and yeah. Block Boy Rello's song, right? Mm -hmm. and, and it's a certified stepper. And I really have said this over the years when I was doing my Foaming at the Mouth DVD. Big shout out to Israel Mills and Angry Man. Angry Man just reached 500,000 subscribers. He does the YouTube full time. Big shout out to them. The reason I bring that, we're doing the Foaming at the Mouth DVD, and I, this is no disrespect to New York, California, anywhere. I would put the top 50 in Winston against the top 50 in anywhere in the world. Mm. And I brother, that would be a dope show, wouldn't it? Like a like a like a like almost a fight club kind yeah. of co concept. Yeah. But what what do you think give your flowers to give me some of your artists in Winston that motivate you that you think are dope? I might have to say the 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 one the one that has had the most impact with honestly would be GP Moneybags. That is my dude, man. He has been when I say a one since day one, since like, like GP and me were clicked immediately. Right. I had um and and also um Chris Lewis. Man, Chris, Chris Lewis is another so artist dope. that I've known since he was like a teenager. Right. Right. And uh, I mean, just watching what he does, and obviously Rick. I mean, Rick kind of goes without saying because he's like the goat. Right. Right. Uh, um, right. Him, Kenny G, Louis. Yeah, man. all the AOG and um. And definitely Casino Dollars. And I actually feel like Casino Dollars don't really get his flowers either. Of course not, because a lot of people don't understand him. Yeah, but I mean... <sighs> He's I dope. Think, his music is dope. Well, it's real. It's honest music. And that's where me and him, you know what I'm saying? That's where, that's where the, the sense got made. Right, with, right. With me and him. He, he actually uh, featured on my first album. Okay. We had a crazy song called Heart on Fire on the Alta album. Y'all look that up. Heart on Fire, Chase Elliott featured Casino Dollars. And then... When I was rounding out the album, that last studio session I did on Memorial Day, I asked him to, you know, pull up, and he did. Just and and he, we did that song in the studio together. Wow. Came so far off the new album. And it's just been, since then, man, he has always been consistent. He's always pulled up and showed love, and he didn't have to. And I have to say, like, based on what his cousin told me years ago, I had to call Cap because, nah, like, it worked out just fine, man. Wow. And that's a real one, and I appreciate him for everything. I didn't ask yeah. you. Your thoughts about writing that song about your mother. Could you really delve deep into that? What was your concept? And before I do that, please hand me this picture right here, sir. You don't have to turn the camera off. Camera's on. I usually do this at the beginning of the show. Without my mother, there would be no me, no, none of my children, or my grandbabies. Look, look at this beautiful lady. That is my mother when she was young. I'll hand that back to you. Is that you? In the, is that you as a baby? No, actually, always people always ask. <laughs> I gotta crop that baby out. Who the hell was she holding? <laughs> no, that that's one of the nieces and nephews at the time. But um, Betty Spillman, where would the world be without you? I want to give a shout out to my wife's mother because without her mother, I wouldn't have such a lovely wife that puts up with me. <sighs> Wally, how hard am I to put up with? <laughs> Oh, the people know, oh, he's so nice, he's so patient, they don't know the other fiery side of me. She's whispering, talking junk. But please, if you, if you wouldn't mind, I know it's a touchy subject, would you please share with us what were your thoughts after losing your mother and writing that song and tribute it to your mother? Well, I mean, the whole album itself is really a tribute to her. I mean, like if you, I don't know if you had a chance to hear it, but the last song on the album is called You Ain't Around. No, I only got to the first three. Okay, when you listen to You Ain't Around. Okay. And I will give you time to go dry your eyes because it's one of them. You think If you think wow. Still Standing is like that, listen to the last song on the album. That last song on the album, I talked directly to my mother unfiltered. Could we, could we pull it up pull now? It, please. Okay. Please, yeah. So where is it on YouTube? Where is yeah, it? it's on every, okay. every streaming platform there is. YouTube, Apple okay. Music. This one, this one is for my mama. This one... Man. Are you sick of having issues with your webinars, wasting tons of time oh, on troubleshooting with already. attendees? No. If so oh, well, no. This is it. No, I didn't hear this one. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. 
I know they wonder why I cried so hard. I know they probably think I never really tried so hard. But it was all boy, yours and mine and God. Stretching back to the old days. Times were hard. All wow. the years I could have pulled up and tried to spark a bright new start. I knew it'd be a fight regardless. I just didn't want a fire to start. But you were always here, deep inside my heart. So much I wish I could have said, but I could never get a word in. I flinched every time you said God, then you cursed him. Late mm. night, high school days, speech slurring. Was I such a bad kid? I could never be certain. Man, I love that sample, brother. Uh, it's wild, I can still remember your smile, but not when I seen it last year. It's been a little while. But what I didn't understand then is simpler now. And what I couldn't seem to grasp then, I'm getting it now. In the old days, I'm missing them now. I'm talking back before the flipping out, when I was just an innocent child. I remember it, how you were so different. Wow, to be a widow that young, you seem to figure it out. No matter what, we never did without. You made sure of that. Fed wow. me, clothed me, nice home we were living at. You would come home exhausted, feet hurting. Two and three jobs at a time, just keep working. Try to find peace, no luck, just keep searching. Maybe have a couple drinks each night and sleep worse. And worse. Look. You helped me tight cause I was all you had left Of a husband you survived in death Even ten years later I still seen it in your eyes You wept, clutched the pillow every night as you slept See I wasn't your husband but sometimes I feel I filled that void Expectations of a man but I was still that boy And in some ways I'm still that boy But in order to survive I had to kill that boy mm. And what I once saw was a mom that's overbearing Was nothing more than a broken parent Thanks. And the trauma you went through was so apparent Which manifested in the need to control me and hold me there Yeah it wasn't fair, but I get it. So it was better that I loved you from a distance. Struggled with forgiveness, flooded with resentment. Never took an interest in your grandchildren. Was it really pigment, or was it something different, or was it sickness? Either way, Ma, you missed it. Listen, I ain't here to throw shots you can't defend. I ain't here to fight battles too late to win. I just want to heal, let the new games begin. Purge 38 years, let the new days begin. Yeah. Yeah. But I gotta give credit where credit was due The truth mm. is you did the best you could do I said I gotta give credit where credit is due So I dedicate this album to you Yeah, gotta give credit where credit was due The truth is you did the best you could do I said I gotta give credit where credit was due So I dedicate this album to you Something old, something new Wow Yeah Some stuff I can't even write, man I just gotta say it Mama you died last year, but the truth is, I lost you a long time ago. And I've come to realize recently that it, it's not the fact that you died that hurts me the most. What hurts the most is you died before we can make it right. Oh, wow. It's the loss of that possibility. I always assumed that maybe in your old age you would soften it. Things would work out that we'd be close again. I always thought I'd get to say goodbye. See, our story is so rich and it ended so bitter. It wasn't supposed to be like this. But I want the universe to know that I understand. It wasn't you, not the real you. You were just a hurt person. And hurt people hurt people. Mm. And I know you're going to hear this wherever you are now. So mama, I forgive you. And I hope you forgive me. I'm happy you're not living in pain anymore. I pray you found peace. And I know you're with daddy and that's what you always wanted. See, I was bitter just like you. I was mad at the world just like you. I felt I got a dealt a raw deal just like you. And the reason why we are the way we are is because we are the same. Hmm. Wow. But I'm not gonna do the same things you did. I'm gonna learn from you. I'm gonna be a better me for my babies. And the good things you did put in me are still here. And I'm gonna put them into your grandchildren. And if I never said it before, I know now how hard it was. Because it's been hard for me too. It took me growing up to understand, but I understand. I could never say these things to you while you were here because we could never get far enough in the conversation without fighting. But I can say them now. I love you, Mama. Wow. That is a tear jerker, brother. <clears throat> yeah, that's, uh, that's the last one. 
on the album. So when you talk about, you know, writing, um, <laughs> writing a song for my mom, like it's not that. And I told I told Casino this yesterday. Actually, I was like, it's not that I decided to write a song for my mom or an album for my mom. It's that what the way I was feeling that happened. How do I put it? It's like um, it wasn't like it's backwards. It's like instead of me deciding to write uh, about this, this is all I could write about. Like when it happened, like. It was, um, I needed to say those things. Right, those right. things needed to be said. So that, right. yeah, it wasn't like a decision. It was something I had to do, man, because I was, it, it was It was tough, man. You know, it's been, let's see, I dropped the album Friday, so that was the 8th. So it's been 10, that was, I dropped that album 10 months to the day from the day she passed. Wow. Yeah. Bro, that is, a, um, hmm. uh, the thing I get from it is that, you said something about uh, was it the pigment? Do you have biracial children? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. two daughters. Yeah, so do I. Yeah. Uh, how do you think? Well, in today's world, it's kind of you know a different time than probably when your mother and my mother were growing up. Yeah. But um, wow, I, I'm lost for words, man. Um, wow, that song hits my heart uh, with your struggle. But you said. That you guys didn't get to say goodbye. Yeah. You didn't make it up. So, I mean, you weren't able to. So that's, let me look in the screen and tell people. I have a Do It Today series on my podcast. The reason I say that, I once heard a Muslim brother say, your problem is, is that you think you have time. No one is guaranteed tomorrow. My suggestion, and you could probably say this to your children, now you're telling them you love them and stuff. Tell the people you love them. Wouldn't it be great, brother? Let me ask you this. If while one of our loved ones was struggling, we all did the funeral before the funeral, meaning what do you spend at a funeral? Everybody gets shirts, they get dressed up, they fly in, they spend a lot of money, a lot of love and attention goes to people after they pass. I wish we could do that while we're living. And in studio, if I may share, my brother right here, you're my hero. While he is my hero, this man beat cancer. And uh, you know he and he's just a hero to me, and uh, can't wait to interview him. The things that he and I went through, or let me say, the things that he went through would take most people out. The travels that he and I did back in the day, foaming at the mouth, we up in the hood, Benton Arbor, Michigan, with all the gangsters with blood raw. Remember, you and I were still at the club, and they had to come back and get us because they're like, oh, y'all are in a dangerous spot. I mean, we said, we live in Trey 4. We good anywhere. We love people. <laughs> Texas for Afia Sadiqi. We drove, brother, 17 hours straight. California, we've been everywhere. In the car, in the car. Wow. That's my brother. want to give him his flowers while we can give each other our flowers because we don't know, to be honest, we don't know when our time is to your babies. Yeah. Right here, what would you say to your babies right now? How old are they, and what would you say to them if they can watch this? Um... Well, you know I love you because I show you with my actions. Lead with your heart. Mm. Leave pride at home. Um, understand that the, the, the most valuable things in this world are not material. And they're the, the things that you take for granted right now, I tell them this all the time, the things that you experience, just little things like riding in the car together, listening to a song or going and doing certain things we do, just little things that we do. Like, soak that in and love it now because there will come a day when I'm not here anymore and your mom's not here anymore. And right, you right. will you will think back on those times. That will be what you hold on to for the rest of your life. See, you know, my mom and I did not see eye to eye on a lot of things for, for a long time. But the the thing is, is that, you know, when I was younger, like, you know, I'd say up till I was probably in my mid teenage years, like I have tons and tons and tons of great memories of of, of us then, you know, um, and that's what I'm I celebrate her as a person because, you know, regardless of what our differences were, like she didn't have it easy. Either. She was a widow. Wow. My, my dad died when I was a kid. Wow. I'm sorry. I mean, like two or year, two year, three years old. So it's like um, that's hard. Yeah, man. Just me and her. In that one song that I heard, the first song that you sent me, you said, or was it that song? My memory's terrible. You yeah. said two to three jobs. 
No, I, um, well, no, I worked. Um, no, you said that your mom. Oh yeah, my mom. Yeah, she would work, man. So she worked for UPS. She would work. Um, that was one one of her jobs. That was her main job. But then she would work at Samos Barbecue in Winston. I don't know if you remember when Samos Barbecue was in Winston. Do you remember wow. that on Indiana? No, I don't. But she worked two jobs. One was a barbecue UPS. That's totally different. Yeah, man. and and then and uh, she would also like sing at different places, like on the weekends, that because people that she. Right, you know, um, did music with you know in the country music uh, right. stuff around like Lexington and Winston and stuff. But I mean, that was years after she had like really done it big, like back in the day. This was like in the later years. Right. But she was doing that. I mean, she worked. I mean, she was a hustler. Like you know, she whatever it took to to take care of everybody. You know, me and her and and what she was trying to do, she did it. I mean, she was a hard worker. Were you a single? Are you a single child? Yeah. Okay, great. Only yes. child. Yeah. Only child. Wow. That even hits harder. Mama, mama's grinding. We give a shout out to uh, the mothers. There's a saying in the tradition of Islam that paradise, paradise is at the feet of the mothers, right? Mother. So the woman, paradise lies at the feet of our mothers. Shout out to our mothers. Look at my people trying to call me from Washington State. Look at this. We got to hold up on them. That's what I love about these interviews, man. If we run businesses, we're family men. It's not like back in the day TV. Cut, action three. It's just all real deal. Taking us out. We'll be finishing the next few minutes, next few questions. I can add, we got to get you back, man. This brother is a book, brother. He is a library. He is a resource and wealth of information. Not only are you talented, man, I think you have a good soul. Who are you really? Who is Chase Elliott really? Who is the soul of you? Not what people see. Could you describe us who you really are? I am a creative kid trapped in a man's body. Baby, you hear this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. You care to elaborate. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, that that would be the, the best way I would describe it. Um but I'm also a very, um, I feel things deeper, I think, than a lot of people. I'm not going to say a lot of people. I don't know how, but like right. things um, land on me and stay longer, if that makes sense. So you're empath? You, yeah, yeah, to yeah. some degree, yeah. I mean, it just depends on what it is. Like, um, I don't just get over stuff quick. I mean, some things, obviously, right. but, you know, like a lot of times, like, I go on in life and I do normal stuff and I'm I'm normal, but like it's always in the back of my mind, you know, like just if something could happen and it's like, man, like uh, just reflect. I'm a reflector and I'm right. a, um, 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 I am also, oh, I am also a uh, wealth of useless knowledge, <laughs> but also <laughs> it's probably great knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, w I don't want to, I wouldn't call myself a rap historian, but like I can tell you we a weird amount of details about rap uh, uh, connected things. Okay, give me a fact that most people wouldn't know about in rap history that you might know about. I don't know about it. It's not that they wouldn't know. It's just the, the amount of it that I know. Okay. So it's like... Um, Do you remember hmm. how many original members there were to the Wu-Tang? I can name them all off the top of my head. Go ahead, brother. Uh, you got RZA, Jizza, Old Dirty Bastard, Inspector Dat, Raekwon the Chef, Method Man, Ghostface Killer, Master Killer, You God, and Capadon. Does he count? Yeah, why not? Now yeah. he does. Yeah, yeah. listen, <laughs> golly. All right, all right. Okay, let me ask you this. I'm yeah. gonna say I'm gonna say the name of a song, and you tell me the artist. Gotta let your nuts hang. Is that from the '80s? What year were you born? '83. Okay, maybe that was Scarface. We, we better give him a break. Scarface. Okay, okay, okay. Got to let a hoe be a hoe. Uh, too short. Close. Willie D. Willie D. Okay. Yo, but Willie D. Listen, I was listening. To okay, Scarface. go. Uh, I don't mean uh, not, no, no, no. Yeah, okay. I'm an old man. Okay, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Ninety. Go ninety three to now. Okay, you'll blow me away because I don't know none of yeah. them. <laughs> okay, let's say uh, Tales of Two Cities. Uh, J Cole. You just did that today. Yeah. Listen, man. Listen, we're gonna have to have him on as a guest, right? And he'll just come through and rock out the information. <laughs> Is there anything you'd love to say to people about your album in closing right here? Oh, wait, not closing. Closing the interview, but we got to put him in the chamber. We mm. got to get him over there in front of that mic. Mm. Yes, sir. Yeah, just listen to the album. It's available everywhere, um, all streaming platforms, wherever you get music from, YouTube, Apple Music, Amazon, 
Title, Spotify, all that. It's there. Chase Elliott. That's two L's, two T's, E L L I O T T. Still standing is the album. And it is by far the best body of work I've ever made. It is the album that defines me. It is my Illmatic. It is my Marshall Mathers LP. Wow. This is the one. If you ever wanted to listen to anything I ever made, please listen to this one. Brother, it's been an honor having you on. Wally, I think what we'll do. I love you, brother. You family now. Thank you. You are family. Nice to meet you. Rest in peace to your mother. Yeah. This is a tribute. Our mothers would be proud of us. Peace and blessings. Thank you for being on the show. Yeah, man. Heartbroken, got the bars flowing. Yeah. Back to dart throwing. Heavy load with no tarp on it. Yeah. It's hard knowing what the future holds. Stare up at the stars. Arms folded. Whatever God's got going on, hell if I know it. It's mind blowing. The rate at which time's going by. Every year somebody close dies. I'm asking why, Lord. Couldn't you give them just 25 more? Selfish pride, rob my ass blind, just keep your eyes forward. Like there's a prize for you. For a decade, I had to grind for it. Most of what I got, somebody died for it. And I'm grateful to have it, it just ain't how I want it. Mama, I know you said not to cry for you. But the more my mind wonders, makes my eyes water. My biggest fear was some shit like this. But even back when you was here, it used to feel like this. But it takes pain to make me spit like this. You know I'm about to give you flames when I get like this. Cause even when I find closure, it's never over. How much more will I take till I break? I'm getting close. <laughs> more can I take till I break every day I'm getting closer and closer how much more can I take till I break every day? I never I'm intended to wear my welcome out. Nope. But for every hit I took, I had to belt one out. Just to level out, I got so much to tell about. Cause if I held it all in me, I'd be in hell by now. Selling out is for those that's about the money, but I don't do it for currency. It's more like therapy, I could use a case of emergency. It takes a lot of words for me to purge, for me to hurt me. So when you get a verse from me, I deliver it surgically. Crafted with care and precision, like a careful decision. Unaware of my brilliancy and unbearable vision. Stuck in a terrible situation, I stand in the darkness seeking a flare in the distance scared and intimidated my fear turned to fury then the vision got blurry still i see this shit clearly i ain't leaving here cause this isn't a river dare cheat it's a minute of clarity the beginning of everything how much more will i take till i break every day i'm getting Till I break every day, I'm getting